submarines, the quiet marauders of the seas, meeting out death and destruction from beneath the waves. From the first diesel-powered designs to the nuclear-powered giants of the Cold War, they have barely changed shape. But on the inside, they've evolved into the most menacing machines on the planet. They're capable of destroying ships, cities, even entire countries. In conflict spanning almost a century, the tactical role of these seagoing monsters has changed radically. The only constant is their ability to submerge, quickly and quietly, to achieve the one goal all submarines strive for, stealth. Now, top 10 will test, assess, and grade the best submarines in history. Through two world wars, submarines played a crucial role in naval warfare. But with the dawn of the nuclear age came new missions, new targets. Today's subs provide a frontline nuclear deterrent and can patrol underwater for months on end. They have also become faster and quieter. But a sub's legend isn't built on what it can do. It's built on what it has done. Based on expert opinion, audience polls and technical comparison, we've constructed a five-point matrix that will rank the top 10 submarines of all time. At number 10, it's the sub that took the Cold War beneath the seas, creating a stealth platform with apocalyptic nuclear firepower. George Washington class, country of origin, United States. Type, nuclear ballistic missile submarine. Power plant, one S5W PWR nuclear reactor. Offensive armament, 16 Polaris A1 missiles, six 53 centimeter bow torpedo tubes. Submerged displacement, 6,700 tons. In the 1950s, the fear of global nuclear conflict gripped the world. Billions of lives were at stake. America was in a Cold War with the Soviet Union and both sides were trying to seize an advantage. The Americans believed the answer lay in submarines. In the 50s, people get the idea that if you took nuclear missiles, which you would otherwise have in a silo in the ground on the land, and stick them in a submarine, they'd be a lot harder to find and a lot harder to destroy. To achieve this, the US had to develop a sub capable of launching nuclear missiles while submerged. In 1958, American naval designers took a Skipjack-class sub that was under construction and added a 40-meter-long missile compartment. Inside were the first long-range Polaris nuclear missiles. We have to remember when the George Washington fires its first missile, you know, this is the era of the Cuban Missile Crisis. John Kennedy is president. He witnesses that first test. And there's a very, very famous note that he writes saying that anybody who witnessed that launch of the first Polaris A-1 would be absolutely convinced that it was one of the most important weapon systems ever created and would immediately sober any of America's enemies. Crews of the Washington-class subs called them boomers. They could operate silently at impressive depths for a long time. On her first deployment, the USS George Washington stayed submerged for 66 days, a world record. More importantly, she could launch a nuclear strike from 1,600 kilometers away. America had stolen a lead in the arms race, and the Soviet Union was in shock. In 1960, for the first time, 
the Soviet Union can be attacked by surprise by the West, just as the Soviet Union was attacked in 1941. And that scares the hell out of the Soviets. The Washington has an impressive fear factor. Stealth is good, innovation is good, but service length and combat performance are average, leaving her in 10th place on our list. During their short history, submarines' technology has changed radically. From a World War I pioneer to a nuclear-powered Cold War giant, these are the top subs ever. A submarine doesn't have to be a wonder of nuclear technology to have a significant impact in war. In ninth place on our list, is a record-breaking German boat that helped define the role submarines would play in 20th century naval combat. Type 31 U-boat. Country of origin, Germany. Type, medium-range attack submarine. Power plant, two diesel engines totaling 1,700 horsepower and two electric motors totaling 1,200 horsepower. Offensive armament, four 50-centimeter torpedo tubes, one 9-centimeter deck gun. Submerged displacement, 864 tons. There could have been nothing more frightening to a merchant seaman in the First World War than somebody shouting, U-boat. 274 U-boats sank 12.8 million tons of shipping. In 1914, Britannia ruled the waves. Her fleet patrolled the world, and although Britain had built a number of submarines, they were largely regarded with distaste. There was a lot of suspicion around in all navies, skepticism, the sense there were ungentlemanly weapons, and it did offend the old guard. Admiral Sir Arthur Wilson said that all submariners in war should be hanged as pirates. The British reluctance to embrace submarines meant their defenses against German U-boats were less than adequate. The submarine protection plan for the big British fleet base at Scapa Flow was to send out sailors in little rowboats with a mallet and the idea was that they'd row around the main base of the British High Seas Fleet, and if they saw a periscope, they would row their little rowboat up to the periscope and hit it with the mallet. Even more damaging was the British Admiralty's refusal to provide merchant shipping with armed escorts. Hence, German U-boats prospered. Arnoul de la Perriere, the legendary captain of U-35, sank 194 ships, totaling 450,000 tons, a world record that will probably never be beaten. Like all submarines of the time, U-35 spent little time underwater. Since a submerged U-boat moved more slowly and drained valuable battery power, they also rarely used their torpedoes. The dead gun is considered to be a far more potent and also reliable weapon because the submarine torpedo is still under development and refinement. And it's difficult to use it properly, especially against a moving target. In February 1917, the Germans declared unrestricted submarine warfare, sinking over half a million tons of shipping per month. U-boats, which before the war had been casually dismissed, were pushing Britain to the brink of starvation. Until the Royal Navy realized that the Germans were going to win the whole war, trenches, Gallipoli and all, just by sinking Allied ships with U-boats. Until the Royal Navy figure this out and start running convoys, they are losing the war. Heavily armed convoys began in July 1917. Attacking U-boats increasingly found themselves coming under heavy fire, and very soon, their threat was neutralized. But the submarine had come of age. The Type 31 has a high fear factor. Combat performance is excellent. Innovation is average. Stealth 
is average and service length is low, putting this German Bruiser at number 9 in the top 10. At number 8, it's the Beast of the Seas. A Soviet Leviathan built to lurk beneath the Arctic ice and, if need be, rain nuclear weapons down on her Cold War enemies. Typhoon class. Country of origin, Soviet Union. Type, nuclear strategic missile submarine. Power plant, two PWR nuclear reactors. Offensive armament, 20 SSN-20 Sturgeon SLBMs. Six 53-centimeter torpedo tubes. Submerged displacement, 48,000 tons. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union struggled to keep up with American weapon development. Despite the huge costs involved, submarine technology was a crucial part of the competition. It's amazing that the Soviets were able to design something so large and so maneuverable and so capable. Instead of building harvesters and tractors that work and that are effective, they're building enormous submarines. The Typhoon submarine is so potentially effective. It is such an excellent piece of equipment by Soviet standards. It boggles the mind. These are people who cannot make a working car. With the Typhoon, the Soviets achieved a state-of-the-art sub that dwarfed its rivals. When it's submerged, it displaces 48,000 tons, more than a Second World War battleship. The Typhoon's sheer mass was impressive. Even more important to the crew, the sub's size allowed luxuries older submariners could only dream of. It was planned for a very long deployment, 120 days. And when you look at the facilities on board, they had saunas and swimming pools, and it was obviously designed to, to keep the crew interested and in the height of comfort. But the Typhoon wasn't a pleasure boat. It was a submersible missile farm capable of launching 20 ballistic missiles with up to 200 nuclear warheads. One of those submarines with ballistic missiles, nuclear tipped, with multiple re-entry vehicles could probably devastate the eastern seaboard of the United States. Just one submarine. As a class, the Typhoon was designed to sit out nuclear exchanges and launch a retaliatory strike. Breaking through nearly four meters of ice with its specially strengthened fin, the Typhoon's mission could render her crew the last men on the planet. Once all of the dust had been launched into the air, and once the nuclear winter was gonna start up, which was gonna cloud over the whole planet, then, and only then, is Typhoon gonna bust up through the ice pack on the surface of the Arctic Ocean and throw the knockout punch that finally wins the war for Ivan. That's what Typhoon is for. The Typhoon has a high fear factor. Stealth is excellent. Innovation and service length are good. But combat performance is average, putting this Soviet beast at number eight in our top 10 list. In seventh place, it's the Japanese sub who thought she was an aircraft carrier. I-400 Sentoku class. Country of origin, Japan. Type, aircraft carrying submarine. Power plant, four diesel engines, totaling 7,770 horsepower, and four electric motors, totaling 2,400 horsepower. Offensive armament, eight 53-centimeter bow torpedo tubes, one 14-centimeter deck gun, three M6A1 Siran seaplanes, armed with torpedo or 800-kilo bomb. Submerged displacement, 6,400 tons. Pearl Harbor, 1945. American brass and stunned crewmen stand aboard a captured Japanese sub. Its history is short, but incredible. 
four years earlier, the Japanese had gone to war with one of the newest and most advanced submarine fleets in the world. The Imperial Japanese Navy has a technically sophisticated submarine force at the start of the Second World War. It's fairly large, they have about 70 submarines, and these submarines are designed to scout for the enemy battle fleet and to attack it as it closes on Japan. The I-400 Sentoku class, launched in 1945, was the largest submarine in the world. Her enormous proportions disguised extraordinary stamina. This beast could travel 60,000 kilometers without refueling. But the Sentoku size wasn't just for show. Remarkably, its 35 meter forward section housed three Siran seaplanes. It had hangars on the front of the hull. It had those aeroplanes with their wings folded on floats inside cocoons. You could take this boat to the shores of your enemy, in this case the United States, and launch a strike. So the aim was that you had, it, in effect, a stealth aircraft carrier. The Japanese High Command began planning an audacious attack. The I-400 would launch its seaplanes against one of America's most vulnerable and strategic assets, the Panama Canal. If it could destroy one of the lock gates on the Pacific side, it would empty the canal. It would make it unusable for months. That was the prime reason that Japan went ahead with the I-400. Luckily for America, the mission never took off. Events in the Pacific overwhelmed Japan, and the assault was shelved. At the end of the war, three I-400s were captured and studied by the Americans. They are innovative designs. They show an experimental competence that the Japanese were willing to make an investment. And they do show some distinctiveness and thinking out of the box that other navies were unwilling to do in most cases. In 1946, the Soviet military asked the Americans to hand over an I-400 for inspection. In response, the US Navy scuttled them. That gives the sub a service length of just one year Combat performance is average, stealth is good, innovation is high, as is fear factor, placing the I-400 seventh on our list. At number six, it's the 30-ton midget that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a 44,000-ton giant. X-Craft, country of origin, United Kingdom. Type, midget submarine. Power plant, one Gardner diesel engine, totaling 42 horsepower, and one electric motor, totaling 30 horsepower. Offensive armament, two 1,620 kilo charges of Amatol high explosive, or limpet mines. Submerged displacement, 30 tons. You don't have to be suicidal to pilot an X-Craft, but you've got to be insanely brave. During World War II, both the Allied and Axis powers experimented with midget submarines. Some carried frogmen who would set charges. Some fired torpedoes, others were torpedoes, driven to their destination by divers. But for all of them, the mission was the same, to infiltrate harbors where bigger conventional submarines could not and would not go. Imagine a huge pile of explosive that you need to get past torpedo nets and past defensive systems to get them to the target. And now imagine that you don't have computers good enough to do that kind of navigation. What are you gonna do why don't we just stick a human being in and have the human being navigate this bag of explosives onto a target so that it can sink something that's well defended. The British built a series of four-man midget submarines called X-Craft. They targeted high-value German battleships. In 1943, that meant the pride of Hitler's fleet, the Tirpitz. Whilst in port at the Karfjord in Norway, 
its massive guns had to be silenced. It was described by Winston Churchill as the beast. Her very existence uh, posed a threat to, in particular, to the Arctic convoys. And if she had got out and uh, started marauding, uh, given her firepower and her pure enormity, and in a sense, what she stood for, the majesty of the Third Reich, Churchill wanted her off the map. On the 19th of September, 1943, three X-Craft made it to the field. To succeed, they would have to evade mines, nets, and machine gun fire. Then get beneath the turpits and release their side charges. It was David versus Goliath as the midget subs went up against the 44,000-ton battleship. X-5 was almost certainly sunk about a mile from the target. X-6 and X-7 battled their way in through the nets, bashed their way in. The X-Craft are able to place a one-ton explosive charge under her engine room, which cripples the battleship for the remainder of 1943 and most of 1944. The turpits had been neutralized. On the 12th of November, 1944, while being repaired, it was attacked again by 29 RAF Lancaster bombers. Three direct hits with 5,400 kilo tall boy bombs tore open her hull. 971 German sailors were killed. Proportionally, the crews of the X-Craft were hit even harder. It costs us a dozen lives to take Tirpitz out of the equation, to satisfy the Prime Minister. Worth it? Hell yes. Despite its size, the X-Craft continued to punch above its weight, taking out Italian warships in the Mediterranean and playing a major role in the D-Day landings by marking the beachheads. As a result, combat performance is high, as are scores for fear factor and stealth. Innovation and service length are average, putting this midget sub just outside our top five. Nuclear weapons change the nature of warfare. And when the United States became the first country to apply nuclear power to submarine design, it changed the nature of strategic planning. Fifth in our list is an underwater icon, an American submarine that went where no sub had gone before. USS Nautilus, country of origin, United States, Type, nuclear-powered submarine. Power plant, one S2W PWR nuclear reactor. Offensive armament, six 53-centimeter bow torpedo tubes. Submerged displacement, 4,092 tons. Everyone could take comfort for many years that although submarines were hard to detect when they ran submerged, at some point they would have to come to the surface and recharge their batteries, and Nautilus just ruins that. In the late 40s and early 50s, most subs could stay submerged for only a few hours. But with the dawn of the nuclear age came the prospect of unlimited power that would allow a sub to stay submerged for days, weeks, even months. Hyman Rickover, director of the Naval Reactors Branch, made this vision a reality. The challenge for him and his team was to develop a nuclear reactor that was small enough to fit inside a submarine hull and to make that safe enough um, to protect the crew from any potential risks from that reactor. With the shock of the nuclear strikes in Japan still fresh, opposition was fierce. The potential for disaster was on everybody's mind, and Rickover trod carefully. This guy would not compromise when it came to safety, not because he was an angel, but because he realized one mistake, it's all over. One mistake, and nobody's ever going to trust that power ever again. So, he didn't make one mistake. Nautilus was launched on the 21st of January, 1954. 
15,000 people watched American First Lady Mamie Eisenhower break the traditional bottle of champagne across her bow. A year later, the Nautilus cast off with the message, underway on nuclear power. She immediately impressed captain and crew with her speed and stealth. She was a sports car. She was the dream of every submariner since they first popped the hatch. She had no deck gun. Her external surfaces were completely free of any hydrodynamic drag. The Nautilus could travel 96,000 kilometers on a lump of uranium the size of a golf ball. A diesel-powered submarine would have required 11 million liters of oil. The Soviets had fallen behind. To prove the point, on August the 3rd, 1958, Nautilus completed the first ever submerged voyage across the North Pole. The fact that Nautilus starts her career with a very well-publicized transit of the Arctic submerged is a demonstration of how powerful the United States Navy had become. The Nautilus was the prototype for all modern subs. As a result, she scores high on innovation. Fear factor is excellent. Service length, stealth, and combat performance are good, putting the Nautilus at number five in our top 10. At number four, it's a big hitter. A sub with twice the firepower of a U-boat. T-Class. Country of origin, United Kingdom. Type, Ocean Patrol Attack Submarine. Power plant, two diesel engines totaling 5,000 horsepower and two electric motors totaling 2,900 horsepower. Offensive armament, 10 53-centimeter bow torpedo tubes and one 10-centimeter deck gun. Submerged displacement, 1,560 tons. If you ask any British submariner, what is the iconic submarine? What is the best submarine? What's the most successful submarine class? It's going to say the T-Class, the T-Boats. The Royal Navy T-Class is one of the great survivors among submarines. The first boat was ordered in 1936, and the last of its type wasn't decommissioned until 33 years later. The T-Class saw heavy action against German forces. It dealt out some serious punishment, but also suffered terrible losses as the battle for naval supremacy raged across the seas. British T-Class submarines enjoy several advantages over enemy submarines during the Second World War. Most notably, they have very good crews and they have excellent captains. Good seamanship allowed the T-Class to outrun her enemies. But when she had to turn and fight, her captains could rely on the most lethal torpedo armament of any World War II submarine. She carried 10 torpedo tubes, six internal forward, two internal aft, and two external. So, um, a big punch. The T-Class was like a T-Rex, capable of ripping smaller predators apart. Enemy submarines were a speciality for the British beast. They say today that the best anti-submarine weapon is another submarine. Well, that really started from the T-boats, that they were able to engage uh, other submarines and win. Uh, they did this by having reliable torpedoes and most importantly, having well-trained professional crews. Like all subs that dominate the seas, the T-Class had a huge impact on land battles as well. In 1942, Rommel's Africa Corps was battling Montgomery's troops in North Africa. The T-Class swept the coast, preventing supplies from reaching Rommel and giving the Allies a decisive victory. Without that battle, in which the Royal Navy operated 94 submarines and lost 47, there's no doubt that the German Africa Corps would have reached Alexandria and would have captured the Suez Canal. By the end of the war, Royal Navy submarines had sunk or damaged two million tons of shipping, including 78 warships, 38 of which were submarines. They also lost 73 boats and 2,000 men. 
With 31 years of action under her belt, the T-Class has outstanding service length. Fear factor is high, combat performance is high, innovation is average, putting this big hitter just outside our top three subs. Coming in at number three is an American submarine that was as famous for its fearless captains as it was for its record-breaking kills. Gato class, country of origin, United States. Type, attack submarine. Power plant, four diesel engines totaling 5,400 horsepower and four electric motors totaling 2,740 horsepower. Offensive armament, 10 53 centimeter bow torpedo tubes, two 50 caliber, two 30 caliber machine guns, and one eight centimeter deck gun. Submerged displacement, 2,424 tons. They are the submarines that win the most successful submarine warfare campaign in history. First commissioned in 1936, the Gato was one of America's largest ever class of submarines. It was fast, um, it was extremely long-ranged, they were well-armed, they had radar. So I'm full of admiration for our American colleagues. A fearsome predator, her feeding ground was the Pacific. Her prey, Japanese ships. During the Second World War, America adopted German U-boat tactics. Merchant shipping was fair game, and groups of up to 20 submarines attacked convoys. Indeed, it's deadly when the American submarine force deploys wolf packs of its own. And because they can use the element of surprise and stay at sea longer than anyone expects, they are able to catch a lot of targets very quickly and relatively cheaply. A 73-strong Gato class decimated Japanese supply lines. Japan's ability to resupply beleaguered troops was seriously compromised. When the Japanese are trying to hold on to Guadalcanal, they have no supplies because the submarine force of the American Pacific Fleet is such a threat. Much of this success was due to a handful of hugely expert, daring captains, men like Lieutenant Commander Dudley Mush Morton. Known as the One Boat Wolf Pack, Mush and the men of the USS Wahoo sank 19 ships, totaling 55,000 tons. The Gatos sent more than 1,700,000 tons of shipping to the seabed. The figures are impressive, but it could have been a lot more. Time and again, American torpedoes failed to explode on impact. But the malfunction the Gato crews feared most was the dreaded circular run. Torpedo would come back around at the submarine rather than headed for its target. So you would lose a vessel because we'd essentially commit suicide on the line. Eventually, most of the problems with the torpedoes were ironed out. By the end of the Pacific campaign, the American submarine force had destroyed 30% of the Japanese Navy and over 60% of the Japanese merchant fleet. The Gato has outstanding combat performance and a high fear factor. Innovation is good, service length is good, and stealth is average, putting her at number three in our top 10. At number two, it's a billion dollar sub with state-of-the-art technology. Seawolf class. Country of origin, United States. Type, nuclear attack submarine. Power plant, one General Electric PWR S6W nuclear reactor. Offensive armament, eight 66 centimeter torpedo tubes and 12 Tomahawk TLAMN launch tubes. Submerged displacement, 9,150 tons. During the Cold War, American hunter-killer subs played a deadly game of cat and mouse with the Soviet nuclear fleet. Increasingly, though, 
the US Navy was chasing shadows. Soviet subs were getting quieter. To combat this, America spent $13 billion on a new class of silent assassins. Seawolf means that a Soviet ballistic missile submarine will never hear death coming. Commissioned in July 1997, Seawolf was the first entirely new US attack submarine since the 1970s. Deadly quiet, she was a heavily armed sub with enough computing power to master any situation. The primary mission of the Seawolf was to destroy Soviet ballistic missile submarines before they could attack American targets. But by the time Seawolf hit the seas, the Cold War was over. What do you do with the all-singing, all-dancing boat that is capable of being inaudible, invisible, and yet deliver a massive punch against a Soviet submarine when there is no Soviet submarine? You think of other things it can do. Using state-of-the-art eavesdropping technology, the Seawolf has become an integral part of the modern battlefield. Monitoring enemies from a position of safety, she can also play a significant role in land battles. They are equipped with a wide variety of weapons. Most notably, they have inherited the Tomahawk land attack missile that allows them to strike at targets deep inland. The Seawolf class has also become a prime mover in combat operations, inserting Navy SEALs into hot combat zones. In 2004, a new generation of American subs emerged. The Virginia class, built for the 21st century, it took the best of the Seawolf and made it less expensive. The submarine of the future will be a cruise missile carrying hunter killer with ballistic missiles in, and the Seawolf will be looked at as the prototype for that. It is truly um, a magnificent submarine. The Seawolf scores high marks for innovation. Stealth is excellent, combat performance is good, fear factor is good, but with other newer American classes hitting the seas, Seawolf service length is average, making her the second best sub in our top 10. Nuclear power allowed subs to make a quantum leap in effectiveness and destructive potential. But number one on our list is a throwback, a conventional boat that very nearly changed the course of the greatest conflict in history. It's hard to imagine that a single class of weapon almost brought about a fundamental change in history. But our top submarine came dangerously close to doing just that. At number one, the best of the best, the submarine class that spawned legendary captains and almost gave Germany a decisive victory in the Second World War. Type 7 U-boat. Country of origin, Germany. Type medium range attack submarine. Power plant, four diesel engines totaling 3,200 horsepower and two electric motors totaling 750 horsepower. Offensive armament, five 53 centimeter torpedo tubes and one nine centimeter deck gun. Submerged displacement, 857 tons. The Type 7 U-boat is unarguably the most important submarine of the Second World War. It challenges the most powerful, not one, but the most powerful two navies in the world. And it succeeds in sinking millions of tons of their merchant ships and dozens of their warships. The Type 7 was the workhorse of Germany's World War II submarine fleet. Over 700 were constructed, making it the largest class of sub ever built. The Type 7 boasted a number of improvements, slightly greater depth, excellent hydrophones, dependable weaponry, and then a very, very, very fast dive rate. A well-handled Type 7 could disappear from the surface of the sea within 20 seconds. A fast dive, small profile, and nimble handling 
gave the Type 7 the one quality that all submarines strive for, stealth. On the 14th of October, 1939, Gunter Prien risks shallow water, tricky currents, and detection by its enemy to penetrate the Royal Navy's base at Scapa Flow. With three torpedoes, he sank the British battleship HMS Royal Oak and escaped unharmed. Well, it even drew words of admiration from Winston Churchill, who said it was the most astonishing feat. And in a sense, that kicked off the U-boat war in a truly memorable fashion. Admiral Carl Donitz was convinced his U-boats could destroy the Allies, and he set about proving it. By communicating with his boats, he was able to assemble wolf packs, groups of up to 20 U-boats which ambushed merchant convoys. The tactic worked brilliantly, and U-boat captains became heroes of the fatherland. Eric Topp was one of these elite officers. His boat, U-552, was nicknamed the Red Devil. In March and April of 1942, he sank eight ships for a total of 45,731 tons, a feat which brought recognition from the Führer himself. He made his crew feel invincible, and they would have followed him to the gates of hell and back. And in many cases, they did. The five most successful Type 7s sank 221 ships between them, over one million tons sent beneath the waves, robbing the Allies of men, materiel, and perhaps most important of all, hope that Europe could be saved. Churchill says the only thing that keeps him awake at night is the concern about the U-boats cutting Great Britain off from the rest of the empire and indeed from the United States. And Churchill is right. But in 1943, the tide turned against the U-boats. At the Casablanca conference, Allied leaders resolved to end the submarine menace. Protective convoys were stepped up across the Atlantic. The British had also cracked the German Enigma machine, allowing them to decipher orders being sent to the U-boat fleet. The U-boats had been the hunters. Now, they became the hunted. With the exception of the Japanese kamikaze arm, the submarine forces suffered the highest loss rates during the Second World War. In the case of the U-boat force, those losses are cataclysmic. The crews gave the U-boats a new nickname, Iron Coffins. But despite their losses, the Type 7 U-boat remains one of the most influential weapons of the Second World War. In five years of intense combat, they sank 2,779 ships, a total of 14.1 million tons. The Type 7 class sinks more enemy merchant shipping than any other type of submarine in the conflict, suffers the highest losses of any submarine in the conflict, but causes the greatest fear and the most anxiety to the largest number of nations at the time it is deployed. The Type 7 U-boat that fought her way through the hardest naval campaign in history has also fought her way to the top of our list. She scores maximum marks for fear factor and combat performance. Innovation is excellent, while stealth and service length are impressive, making this German legend our number one. Despite facing stiff competition from submarines that cost billions of dollars and can flatten entire cities, the Type 7 is at the top of our list. Its crews were tested to the very limits of endurance. The boat was an uncompromising underwater assassin and its captains went down in history as the doomed but brilliant masters of submarine warfare. The Type 7 truly is the best of the best. <laughs>